This is Twit. Did you ever have a Scion? No, no. I had a Scion 3A that I just loved. It was about the size of a glasses case. It had a kind of a keyboard, a full-size-ish keyboard. It had its own dedicated operating system. This was back in the day, so mm -hmm. it was, uh, I think it was, uh, it was green screen or gray on green or something like that. <laughs> I contrast. <clears throat> Scion followed up with something they called the Scion 5, which had the same kind of Scion, uh, here's a picture of it, the same kind of Scion interface. You see those menu icons at the bottom, those are kind of hard-coded onto the screen. And I like the keyboard, it's like a full travel keyboard. Never did own a Scion 5 because it was a lot more expensive and not quite more functional. I love my Scion 3A. Then along comes a, a company, an English company called Planet Computers, and they offered this on Indiegogo. They called it the Gemini PDA. They said, basically, we can make now a Scion 5 type digital assistant, but instead of putting this proprietary operating system on, we're going to put Android on it, or Linux, and it's going to be less than a, a high-end Android phone. It's going to have that keyboard, and the Gemini was born. When I saw it, I said, oh, I, I got to get that. That's like the Scion is back. And it is, if you hold it like this, it is kind of like an Android phone. It's not much smaller than uh, than a regular phone. This is an iPhone with a case. It's a smaller than a, bigger than an iPhone, but about the size of a Google Pixel 2 XL. You can actually use it as a phone. I, there's microphone and speakers. In fact, it even auto senses which side is up, and will, and you can actually, do I look a little silly? Looking really fancy. <laughs> But you can actually talk on the phone like this. You can also use it as a speakerphone or as a Skype phone. So there are a couple of differences between this and an Android phone. First of all, there's no outward-facing camera. But there is a camera in here, which makes it a good choice for using with Skype or some other video program. You see, you saw that briefly. It does have the dock bar, but it's software-based, and you can slide it up and down. If you look at this, it actually is just Android. Not the latest, I'm sad to say. It's Android 7.1.1. I would rather see Android 8. Uh, maybe they'll update it with Android 8, but for now it's 7.1. This is their uh, launcher, which I think is a pretty stock uh, Google-style launcher. <clears throat> when you see it with, you know, things like the Photos app, you realize, well, you know what? This is pretty cool because these 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 photos look pretty good. It's a it's a very good screen, and and the quality of the images is actually pretty strong. Having a touch screen on here makes this a I don't know a fairly compelling uh, product. Uh, you can also do many of the things you do on Android. I even have an SSH tool on here so I can log into my server. And because of the aspect ratio and the real keyboard, it's actually much more usable than trying to use a smartphone to log onto a server and type in terminal commands. <clears throat> the speakers aren't great. In fact, let me, I'll play a, uh, an audible book on here. You can see it's a little tinny. It's certainly not something you'd want to listen to music on. It just doesn't have that that base. And you'll have to, in some cases, some apps, this is Apple Music, are not they really savvy. Really they're not want hip. You to be in portrait. They're not hip to the landscape mode orientation of this phone. A surprising number of apps are. In fact, all the Google apps work uh, pretty well. Here's my email program. It works just fine. It says, oh, yeah, I recognize that you're in landscape mode. I showed you uh, Google Photos. Chrome works just like a real browser. Um, that's that's kind of great. Uh, there is uh, haptic feedback, so when I touch the screen, I kind of know I've touched the screen. Maps is actually a really good example of how a screen like this could be pretty useful uh, because you get a little bit more real estate this way. The keyboard is actually very usable. I feel like I could type on this better than I can on my MacBook. But you know mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of the MacBook keyboard. There certainly is a lot more travel. I they, had a foldable keyboard for the Palm 3, It's similar to say. that. It's similar and to it that. And it was similar, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's pretty good travel. There's haptic feedback, so you, you can turn that on or off. But there's haptic feedback, so you know when you've hit a key. They've got a lot of specialty keys, the function key, the alt key. And you can see that if I want to make a phone call, if I press function and that key, it'll launch the phone app. Yes, this makes phone, here's my mom. This makes phone calls. I put a T-Mobile SIM in this, so it has data and phone calls. You could use any GSM SIM in here. I don't think it works with Sprint and, uh, and Verizon very well. So they do say they're gonna put Linux OS on here, that it's gonna be dual boot if you want. Linux would be very interesting on this, but Android works you know, pretty well. It's, this is the same problem that Android's had with a lot of tablet style 
uh, interfaces. They're just not super uh, savvy about that. But there's Google News. It works fine. The images are good. It's text is big and readable. That's not bad. It's not a very fast processor in here. It's a MediaTek MT6797X. Don't even know what that means. A DecaCore uh, Helio X27. It's an ARM processor. It's not a Snapdragon. It's a MediaTek. Uh, but it feels fairly snappy, and uh, I haven't noticed any issues or lag. It doesn't have a huge amount of RAM, just 4 gigs of RAM. 64 gig internal storage, but you can't put an SD card in here. And it does the, it looks like it's doing adopted storage, which means when you put the SD card in here, it adds the internal to the SD card and gets a total size. You don't have to say this is internal, this is external. It handles that very nicely. Quad core uh, ARM Mali T880 GPU, that's probably why it's fairly snappy. It has 4G. They call it 4G. I think that's because it's European. I'm sure it's really LTE. In fact, I am getting voice over LTE using my uh, T-Mobile SIM in here, which is nice. Large battery, 4220 milliamp hour battery. They claim two weeks on standby, 12 hours of talk time. Uh, I found it went at least a day and a half without charging. And by the way, Type-C charging, which is really nice. It has a headphone jack, might as well, when you get something this large. A Type-C port on this side, that's charging. And then this is the Type-C data port. It also has an on-off switch. I'm not sure why, because it comes alive pretty quickly when you open it up. You don't need to really turn it on or off. <clears throat> the dual speakers, as I mentioned, a little bit tinny. Um, it has an uh, integrated voice assistant button if you want to launch your voice assistant. Un oddly enough, it has its own Gemini voice assistant. I haven't really played with that since Google Assistant's on here. That's more than adequate for me. This camera is 5 megapixels, but it's only forward-facing. There's no back-facing. But it, I tried it with Skype, and it works very nicely. So all in all, I have to say, for the price, which is $500 without LTE data, uh, five nine, so you just use it with Wi-Fi. Five, uh, five ninety-nine, a hundred bucks more if you want to use 4G, and I think you will. So six hundred dollars for what is effectively a high-end Android flagship phone with a few quirks and a very nice keyboard. I like this. I've been using it a lot. So where do you use it? In bed, traveling on a train, on a plane. Um, it, I don't know if you'd want to watch movies on it. It's kind of a uh, wide aspect ratio on the side, but you could. It's a good enough screen to do that. I think it's more, to me, this is more like if I want to do email, if I want to do something where the keyboard is going to be more right. important. It's a little PC. This is basically a little PC. That's, ex that's, I think, the best way to think about it. This is the Planet Computer's Gemini PDA. And I, I think a lot of people laugh at me when I pull this out of my pocket, but this actually could be your full time phone and have a little bit more with that nice keyboard built in.